Well, this was a very fascinating Thursday night uh, tour of your gallery here with so many varied and different pieces of art. What about this artist that did this work behind your right shoulder there? This is one of the youngest artists that I have in this gallery, Ben Joyce, and he's from Spokane, Washington. Came highly recommended by one of my clients, uh, mm -hmm. who I respected, and I respect her opinion. Yes. And as you will notice tonight, his work wrap, has baby. absolutely gotten the most attention of any, any other artist that I have in the gallery. So oh, really? I think that speaks highly of the artist and the median and the subject matter that he's chosen to represent in his art. And that's a very mature <laughs> progression in his work that uh -huh. speaks way beyond his years. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. it's recognizable to people as well. Uh -huh. Ben, explain this new technique, please. Yeah, so really, you know, this piece is the island of Manhattan. Uh -huh. We have Central Park here and the highlight is uh, basically the Jacqueline Onassis Reservoir, uh, you know, in the middle of Central Park. And so, you know, really it's, the, uh, the style is abstract topophilia and, you know, the, it's, it's uh, meant to, to recreate a landscape to where people can identify with the shapes in the area and expand the piece beyond what it is and inject it with their own life and histories and emotions and uh, yeah it's you know it's, this is more kind of a confined chaos with what you know the city goes through every day uh, but for some for some uh, reason it all works and so now I've seen some of the other paintings and around here that's kind of a new technique I've not seen that before. Yeah, you know, what I wanted to do is bring in kind of a, a different life into the piece and really try, try to represent the life of the city. And, uh -huh. I mean, there really is, you know, so much going on I that, see. you know, sometimes people uh, forget about the beauty of the landscape. You know, in this way, you can kind of combine the two to where not only do you get the busyness of the city, but then you know, the outline of the city. This is the front of the RCSD building, and uh, as you can see here, <clears throat> Adam and Steve are putting in the Rose Memorial Garden for Kathy Campbell, the uh, uh, RCSD employee who passed away recently. This uh, is just north of Orange on 35th Street uh, on Wednesday afternoon. And uh, you can see all the pipe here that has been laid out for this 48 inch AVEC pipeline that will go up 45th Street, or I'm sorry, 35th Street, all the way to the treatment plant. Tell me what it's like offloading these. Uh, 48 inch pipes. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. I mean, uh -huh. you gotta, you gotta really be careful because uh, I mean, you can do a lot of damage. You know, uh -huh. um, definitely heavy. You know, roughly around, I think, 28,000 pounds. Really? Yeah. How long are they? They're uh, about 40, 48 feet, roughly. 40? They, they vary from 48 to 50 feet. Uh huh. Getting this kind of stuff uh, down the highway, the freeway. That's got to be a trick. Well, there's, um, you gotta be real careful. Uh huh. Um, these, since they're their high center of gravity, uh -huh. any hard braking or any type of sharp turns will make you go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. But, right. you know, it, you just gotta be careful what you do. That's it. How long are you, how many miles are you hauling these? These are coming out of uh, Adelanto. Uh huh, Adelanto. Okay, and I know where it is. It's about around, right around 65 to 70 miles from here. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's not that, not that far, not too no. bad. We're both Republicans, uh, and we have a little difference of opinion than the Democrats have on the health care bill. But I'm going to try to not be partisan. Sometimes it slips out. But we were elected, once we're elected, 
it's our obligation to serve all of our constituents. We don't, when people call out, we don't ask what party they belong to, we ask what their problem is, okay? But we do have honest differences on, on the health care. And, and just for the lawsuit, what the lawsuit is dealing with is the fact that for the first time in our history, a law was passed requiring a person in this country, a citizen, to buy a product. There's a real problem that that creates, a mandate on an individual to buy a product. Now, there was a lot of beating up of insurance companies, but actually, the ones I've talked to are pretty, uh, whatever they say, they're kind of happy that now you're going to have to buy their product. As Buck said, the amount of debt you're accumulating has never happened before. 43 cents out of every dollar this government spends is borrowed. In California, we have 12% of the nation's population. What is the percent that we have of the nation's welfare population? 32%. We get more than 50% from within the taxes of those who pay personally from 144,000 people. Because we punish wealth creators and we reward individuals that are going to take more assistance from government. I believe in helping somebody in a time of need, but not somebody that's going to live their, their whole life in the process. The Fed gives money to banks at uh, 25, uh, a quarter percent? And sometimes right now, percent, yeah. right, and the banks give you mortgages at 6%. And we've got a housing issue, we've got a uh, recession. If we do force, now the banks need the reserve in order to exist, all right? If we can force the banks to give a 3% primary mortgage loan with an average mortgage of $300,000, it would save the average person $600 a month. That's a stimulus, that is. all right? That creates jobs, because yes. now I can buy things. And, and here's the best part. The federal government, now I can write less off. So they get more money from me in taxes. The banks, rather than have one person default at 6% and one person succeed at 6%, now you've got both people succeeding at 3%, so now you don't have a housing issue anymore. This is simple mathematics. Why is there a bill proposed for this? Why do we keep getting these crazy formulas that anyone who has a job really doesn't qualify for? Good question. You can answer that right now, okay? First of all, what do you think about gays in the military? What, why can't we get court reform done? Yes. First, gays in the, in the military. Uh, our committee is working on that, and um, there, there's a proposal to uh, to eliminate the don't ask, don't tell that has been so successful now for a number of years. And what we've asked is that they don't do anything until they do, until they find out how it will affect readiness, how, how it will affect enlistment, how it will affect retention. In other words, I want to know, and, I, and I've, I've talked to the four-star generals, and I said, you know, when you go in a room with a bunch of uh, privates, corporals, sergeants, and say, what do you think about this? They might get a different answer than a sergeant going in and asking, you know? Uh, I want a, a true survey, understanding of how all of those things will be affected in the military before something is done just for political expediency. Number two was... Uh, tort reform. Um, Tort reform, the, the trial lawyers are a major part of constituency of the Democratic Party. Democrats are controlling everything in Washington. They will not let them do anything in the way of tort reform. We tried to, we tried to do that. We're in the minority. We don't have the votes. I get a lot of the mail that, that comes into our office in Rosemont is, is very vocal. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they have a, a lot of concerns and they have a lot of good suggestions. Mm -hmm. and we, we like suggestions more than, you know, this... Uh, the, yeah, the stuff that just complaints, sir. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's great aches. because you know we know what's going on in the community, and we like it when the community responds to us, and uh -huh. that's that's as much as we can ask.